welcome to this lecture 27. So, in this lecture, so we are continuing with the surface investigation of groundwater. And specifically, we are uh, continuing with uh, electrical resistivity method so then we'll move on to seismic refraction method then followed by gravity method and lastly magnetic method. So, coming to this uh, electrical resistivity method which we started in the previous uh, lecture, the electrical resistivity. So, this is uh, the electrical resistivity, it is denoted by the letter rho and this rho is given by R into A divided by L. So, here this R is the resistance. So, this is the resistance which is measured in ohm. So, this is the notation for ohm and A is the, the area, the cross sectional area So, this is measured in square meters and L is the distance So, the distance between opposite faces. So, that is also measured in meters. So, this electrical resistivity so, it has a units of ohm meter. And uh, so, this electrical resistivity it varies for different materials and uh, so, the factors influencing electrical resistivity are material density porosity water content quality temperature pore shape and size etc so this uh, so the variation of uh, generally this igneous and uh, metamorphic rocks have. So, this rho in the range of
10 to the power 2 to 10 to the power 8 it is ohm meter. On the other hand the sedimentary and unconsolidated rocks have rho which is varying between 10 to the power 0 and 10 to the power 4 that is 1 that is uh, ohm meters and uh, so the in porous formations so the water content influences significantly influences the electrical resistivity so the the American Society of Civil Engineers has given the representative variation ranges of uh, electrical resistivity So, in one of its document published in 1972. So, this is representative electrical resistivity variation ranges for various uh, formations. In this case, it is uh, say the material in the electrical resistivity range. So, this uh, in ohm meter and uh, here so this starts with uh, the scale starts with 10 to the power minus 1 and uh, moves on to 10 to the power 1 10 to the power 3 10 to the power 5 and then 10 to the power 7 so, in this case we have this clay whose uh, electrical resistivity varies in the range of is it is uh, more or less uh, symmetrical variation. So, in the range of 10 to the power 0 to 10 to the power 1. So, followed by this is a soft shale which is also 
quite uh, fine grained like this one and uh, in this case also the variation is uh, somewhat similar like uh, clay only thing is in uh, so here it may show a larger variation on the lower side. Then followed by hard shale so in this case the it varies between 10 to the power 1 and 10 to the power 2 and which shows a, a skewness to the right then uh, the fourth one is the till or uh, the tilled earth which shows skewness to the left of course in case of hard clay so it will show this is uh, to say 10 to the power 2 and uh, till which will show a variation which is skewed to the left followed by sand and sand shows again a skew to the power uh, that is a skew which is skew to the left with the mode around 10 to the power 2 ohm meter then followed by the sandstone. So, this is the fifth one is sand, sixth one is sandstone sandstone is even shows it is a even higher electrical resistivity which is uh, almost showing a symmetrical variation uh, with the the mode of the electrical resistivity lying uh, between uh, 10 to the power 2 and 10 to the power 3 and followed by this porous limestone So, this porous limestone also it has the mode value of the electrical resistivity only thing is it is skewed to the left. Then lastly it is the dense limestone and this dense, dense uh, limestone shows a, a large variation and in this case. So, this variation it starts with uh, say 10 to the power 3 and it uh, continues even beyond 10 to the power 6. So, this is how the, the variation of this electrical resistivity it is and as you can see this clay will have a very clay and soft shale will have a very high very small value of uh, very low value of electrical resistivity. Now, let us uh, go to the, the electrical resistivity in this case the, the electrical circuit circuit for uh, determining electrical field electrical resistivity. In a homogeneous formation So, there are basically all the, the uh, two current electrodes which are uh, located far away in the same line as the, the potential electrodes. So, in this case, so this is the, so these are the potential electrodes. So, this P 
implies a potential electrode and uh, C implies a current electrode. It is a symmetrical formation and uh, in this case, so between the potential electrode, so there is a voltmeter and between the current electrodes, so there is a battery source and an emitter. And here in this, so this is the, so this is a C is the current electrode and uh, In this case, the, the current lines are uh, ellipses and the equipotential lines let me show with a, a different uh, color and the equipotential lines are confocal hyperbola. Which are orthogonal to the current lines. like this. So, these are the equipotential lines So, these are in the form of a confocal hyperbola and then these are the current lines So, these are the equipotential lines and these are the current lines. So, these are uh, equipotential, I am sorry, this uh, confocal ellipses. So, so this is the arrangement and in this case, the so what is measured is the apparent resistivity and this uh, so the electrodes now before going to that one so the so the electrodes are uh, metal stakes which are driven into the ground and uh, sometimes this uh, saturated solution so potential electrodes are porous cups with saturated copper solution And here, so this one there are actually two types of arrangement. So, the two say two common arrangements for electrical resistivity. for electrode uh, spacing are 
R one the Venner arrangement and the second one is the Schlumberger arrangement. So, in the Venner arrangement basically the potential electrodes are uh, now, let us uh, discuss about this Venner arrangement. In which the distance between the potential electrodes is one third the distance between the current electrodes. So, there is a voltmeter between the potential electrode and the distance is A and the same distance on either side of the each of the potential electrodes along the same line. There are uh, two current electrodes, the left current electrode and the right current electrode. So, there will be a battery source followed by a ammeter to measure the current and uh, this is the the Venner arrangement. for uh, electrode spacing. So, the now let us discuss the the Schlumberger arrangement. So, the the Schlumberger arrangement for electrode spacing for uh, this electrical resistivity determination. So, here the distance between the the potential electrodes is somewhat less that is uh, say B. If B is the distance between the potential electrodes, there will be an voltmeter which connects the potential electrodes and then. So, the current electrodes are uh, far off of course, it is again a symmetrical arrangement. So, these are the current electrodes and there will be a battery source and followed by this uh, ammeter to measure the current. And uh, in this case, the distance between the current electrodes is taken as capital L and uh, it gives better results. So, it is uh, said that so gives better results when L is greater than 5 B greater than or equal to 5 B. So, this is the second uh, common arrangement for the electrodes and now let us uh, discuss about the the interpretation of the results. So, the the solution can be interpreted in two parts. I 
rather solution can be obtained in two parts. So, in the first part that is the interpretation in terms of of uh, various layers of of actual resistivities and their depths. And in the second part, it is the interpretation of actual resistivities in terms of subsurface geological and uh, ground water formations, ground water uh, conditions or formations. And here one thing I need to mention here, say in case of the the Venner arrangement, this there is what is called the apparent resistivity. Apparent electrical resistivity in Venner arrangement so is given by. So, this is rho a. So, this rho a is 2 pi into a into v by i. So, v is the, the voltmeter reading or the potential difference and i is the current. So, this is the potential difference and i is the current. So, the, the same apparent resistivity in uh, Schlumberger so, this rho a in uh, Schlumberger arrangement, Schlumberger arrangement so this rho a is given by pi into L by 2 square minus B by 2 square divided by b into v by i, where we have shown L is the distance between the current electrodes, b is the distance between the potential electrodes. So, this is the expression for the uh, apparent resistivity in case of Schlumberger arrangement. And uh, now, let us go for say the interpretation of a two layer electrical resistivity measurement from uh, Schlumberger arrangement. So, this is taken from the source Zodi et al. Zodi et al. in the year 1970. 
1974. In this, the apparent resist electrical resistivity rho A is indicated along a vertical logarithmic scale. So, this is the apparent resistivity So, this is in uh, ohm meter and uh, it varies all the way from say 10, so this is uh, say 20, then it is uh, let us say this is 100, then let us say this is say 200. And on the horizontal scale, which is also on logarithmic uh, scale, which is the electrode spacing, this is L by 2 in meters, and uh, it uh, as per this uh, Zodi's results, it varies all the way from 2, and uh, here it is uh, 5, 10, 20, 10 to 100 and 100 to 1000. So, here this is uh, so this is 100 and then this is uh, 1000 and here in between we have say 20, then 50, similarly here we have say 200 then say 500. This case the, so there are basically two curves that is the one is the theoretical curve and the observed curve. So, this uh, the theoretical curve, so it has uh, these points. And the observed curve so in this case. So, this is the, the theoretical curve and this is the observed curve. And here, so this is the asymptote. So, this indicates a, a row 1, and there is a higher level asymptote which is uh, say this row 2. So, this, uh, this row 2 is a 100 ohm meter. And this row one is ten ohm meter, and if you take the so here we have this H one is fourteen meter, and uh, basically. So, this H 1 is the uh, the depth of, so this is the depth of the sandy aquifer and uh, this uh, so basically this is the uh, and this is the asymptote
and here in this case. So, we need to match the theoretical curve and the observed curve, so that finally, we get a this one it shows a lower asymptote of uh, say 10 ohm meter and a higher asymptote of say 100 ohm meter. And so, uh, essentially this represents, so it represents a clay layer of 14 meter that is uh, thickness over which is overlying a sandy aquifer. So, based on the electrical resistivity values, so we can interpret that. Uh, so, this two layer formation having a clay layer at the top, uh, which is uh, over a sandy aquifer. There is also another method of uh, interpretation of the results. So, in this case, this is using the Werner arrangement. So, here here also. So, this is semi logarithmic plot and in this case the horizontal scale is in terms of uh, distance. So, this is the horizontal distance which is in uh, a linear scale. say 100 to 500 meters. So, this is also taken from. So, this is the horizontal profile by surface resistivity So, using uh, Werner arrangement, again the source is the same that is uh, Zodi et al. 1974 and the vertical scale represents the the Werner apparent resistivity. So, this is uh, rho a in ohm meter and this is in this is also in uh, linear scale. So, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250 and 300. In this case, so suppose based on the, uh, the electrical resistivity values, we can identify the strata. So, suppose it is a gravelly clay. In this case, the resistivity will vary just uh, in the range of 100 to 150 ohm meter and if it is uh, gravel then the resistivity will be varying in the range of 200 to 
250 and even uh, slightly higher also and again when it is uh, clay the resistivity again will uh, drop back between the range of 100 and uh, 150 then again when there is a gravel the resistivity goes up again in the uh, above 200 so in this case so again so based on the resistivity measurements we can interpret the formation So, in this case we can say that say up to this it is a gravelly clay and uh, here. So, this is uh, indicating gravel and uh, this is indicating clay again this is indicating gravel. and uh, here it is indicating clay then again followed by gravel. So, like this the when the apparent resistivities are plotted at this horizontal distance between the electrodes in this Venner arra arrangement and uh, so based on the variation of this apparent resistivity we can uh, interpret the ground water form and the subsurface geological formations as well as their uh, ground water permeability. And uh, so, this electrical resistivity method has also been method has also been employed. for uh, delineating geological formations or um, geothermal areas and for estimating aquifer permeability. So, when the so this electrical resistivity when there is a is a pollutant when there is an electrical electrically conducting pollutant. Say for example, there is a soluble salt So, the electrical resistivity method can be used in correlating the the groundwater pollutant uh, 
spread so now we'll move on to the seismic refraction method so in this uh, seismic refraction method a small shock created at ground surface either by impact of of a heavy instrument or by an explosive charge and the travel time required for shock waves to travel known distances is recorded so this is the seismic refraction method and uh, here so the the there is also this uh, seismic waves are similar to to light rays showing reflection comma refraction and uh, simultaneous velocity change and in this case so the seismic reflection so the seismic reflection provide methods provide info on uh, geological formations which are uh, thousands of meters greater than greater than thousands of meters below ground level on the other hand seismic refraction methods provide information
on uh, formations geological formations say up to 100 meters and the characteristic seismic velocities so the the seismic velocities for different material so this is taken from the source the ama of uh, american society the document of uh, american society of civil engineers in 1972 and in this case so this is the velocity in meter per second So, this is uh, 50, 100, 200, 500, 1000, 2000 and 5000. And in this uh, So, here at the loose sand will have a seismic velocity in the range of uh, 100 to 200 meters. So, this is a uh, loose sand and uh, so the silt will have a velocity slightly higher. So, this is silt and uh, so this grav this uh, i'm sorry so this is a uh, this is a top soil so this is the top soil and this is the loose sand and uh, this is followed by silt and so, this is silt as well as gravel. So, gravel will have a higher. Uh, so, this is gravel followed by till So, this is till and then uh, compacted till then sandstone and so on. And this uh, the highest uh, this one with the by seismic refraction velocity is for igneous and volcanic rocks. So, in between you have the sedimentary rocks which have the almost the same uh, this one. So, this is the uh, sedimentary rocks. So, we will uh, stop here and we will continue in the next lecture. Thank you.